This is the e-commerce brain trust, a podcast about building momentum online for established consumer brands. Join our hosts and their expert guests for high level conversations about e-commerce strategies, trends, and innovations. Access our brain trust and boost your brand's e-commerce potential. Hello and welcome back to the e-commerce brain trust podcast. I am your host, Kiri Masters, and I'm joined by your co-host, Julie Spear. Hi, Kiri. Hi, everybody. So if you're a new listener to the show, the e-commerce brain trust podcast is a show for consumer brands who are navigating the e-commerce world. And particularly in this season, we're focusing on the Amazon marketplace because our day jobs at Bobsled Marketing are helping brands to navigate, grow and manage their Amazon presence. And so in this episode, we're going to be diving into a a really hot topic, an important topic that is kind of the foundation of what we do at Amazon. It is about stoking Amazon's search and ranking algorithm. I love this topic. (laughs) You said before we got onto the onto the interview that this topic or this blog post that we're sort of basing our conversation around today is a really great article. So why (laughs) elaborate on that for us? Yeah, that was going to be my hot take. (laughs) This post is great. No, I think it it pulls apart the A9 in a way that is very user-friendly. And Mm -hmm. I think it, it pulls out the salient points of this is what sellers should be focusing on with their listings in order to improve ranking. We know that there's not one magic bullet that you do this and all of a sudden rank is going to go up. There's so many factors that play together. And I think that this article identifies a number of those factors and, and ways that brands and sellers can fine tune their listings in order to work within the A9 to their benefit. Yeah, exactly. And, and just to back up a little bit, uh, we're going to be recapping this article that was actually published about a year ago in February 2017 about, it's called Three Ways to Optimize Your Product Listings for Amazon Search and Ran- Ranking Algorithm in 2017. So I'm going to read through the article and then Julie and I are going to come back and recap the salient points that we want to draw out a little bit and then talk about whether and how it may be different in 2018. So stay tuned for once I get through reading the article out to the listeners, we're going to come back and give our hot take. Three ways to optimize your product listings for Amazon's search and ranking algorithm in 2017. Amazon's near-infinite product library is an incredible source for buyers, but it can also make it incredibly difficult for brands to stand out from the crowd. You need to be appealing not only to potential customers, but also to Amazon's search rank algorithm, which are two entirely different critics. Some traditional rules of search engine optimization, or SEO, apply on Amazon as well, but they need to be adapted for Amazon's environment because of the company's secrecy on how the process works. The search engine, A9, is responsible for converting a user's search query into a relevant result, which is more complicated than it might sound. Unlike Google, Amazon's main goal is to convert customers, and so A9 uses functional search techniques, algorithms, and correlation comparison approaches to deliver not only relevant results, but also results that are more likely to convert. It means that optimizing a product listing is much more than finding the right keywords. Every product listing needs to prove that it can be a converting engine for Amazon. To make the matter more complicated, a listing that's a winning bet right now may not always perform strongly. There's no good way to know when or how Amazon will change A9 in the future. There's been a lot of trial and error when it comes to Amazon, but there are some fairly consistent rules for optimization that remain solid for 2017. Number one, leverage all of the available options to describe your product. You need to add more than just the title, bullet points, and keywords to your listing. The first step to any good SEO initiative is to understand that search is not only about the system that finds a product, but it's equally important to make the product easier to find, dubbed findability. 
Amazon looks deep in analytics to determine how users make queries on their site to find the products that they need. And this effort could not be more easily seen than in the structure of the product listing back end, which is designed for sellers to enter details that are relevant to their products. They figured out what parameters matter for a particular product category based on reviewing search patterns and the products, and then leave it up to the seller to provide these values in the appropriate fields. Note that the fields for a particular product's backend can be different as it depends on the category that the product is in. The full potential of this area is often underutilized by many sellers, despite its clear use in many of the result filtering options used by shoppers on Amazon. The back end is how you describe your product to Amazon's search engine for indexing, often before a sale or the customer search is ever made. It's important to consider the relationship between the specificity of the information that you enter here and the impact it has on your product's relevance to a shopper. This approach for providing structured data to Amazon is fundamentally parametric or field rule-based search which is a technique focused on returning highly precise results to user requests. In the context of Amazon, it provides a solid foundation for their search engine, as well as the basic framework and data needed for search filtering options, which allow users to sort results by specific elements related to that particular product type. For example, when we're talking about distinct values, a laptop will have several components with their own distinct values. A screen size measured in inches and a hard drive measured in gigabytes and so on. These are commonly seen at the left side of the Amazon search results page where a user can filter down based on what size storage they need, what size screen they need and so on. Within Amazon, each field in the back end has a certain amount of weight with some fields affecting how your products would rank overall more than others. So while the keywords in your title and bullets matter, it's only one piece of the puzzle that makes your product easier to find. Fields such as your product model number, charging time, or even stain resistance can have a cumulative effect on how easily buyers discover your products. By being thorough and completing the fields relevant to your product, you're providing A9 with all of the information that it considers important for that category. This gives your product the best chance possible to rank in Amazon search results at the start. So what works? Ensure that you enter values for the fields available for your product. Remember, this doesn't include the product title or description. Secondly, take into consideration that users would browse and filter results using options such as the color map or material type provided by Amazon. These fields power those filtering options. And finally, ensure that important identifiers such as manufacturer model numbers and part numbers are filled in. As Amazon pages are indexed by Google, fields such as model numbers are also indexed, which can help searchers to find your Amazon page, even if it's not mentioned in your product title, bullets, or copy. And what doesn't work? Don't fill these fields with false and misleading information for your product. If it doesn't include a battery, you shouldn't include charging time. If your product doesn't have a camera, there's no need to enter megapixels. At best, you'll see no effect to your listing or it will be lightly penalized. For example, if you're stuffing irrelevant keywords into your back end search terms, you aren't going to rank higher, but possibly lower. Worst case scenario, your listing can be reported for false or misleading information and could be suspended. For example, Amazon clearly states that some of the reasons for not using all keywords may include, but are not limited to, search computational efficiency, potential manipulation of search results, irrelevant search terms, and offensive or illegal terms. The second way to optimize product listings for Amazon's search ranking algorithm is keep your sales rank up with the combined importance of pricing, discounts, and optimizing page listing for conversions. With Amazon, there's a known unknown relationship between sales activity and your sales rank. Going a bit further though, the sales rank for your particular product is linked to your product's rank in the results page for a search query. The sales rank is a relative figure as the product is competing against other products in a particular category. Calculation is based on the product's all-time sales, but recent sales performance is weighted in higher order than older sales report or sales performance. 
For example, the 30 day sales that you had yesterday are taken into consideration more than the 300 sales you had 20 days ago. In essence, the more you sell, the higher you rank. And the higher you rank, the more you sell. In order to have the best chance to continue converting customers and generating sales in the future through your rank in search results, you need to monitor your sales rank and ensure that it's consistently rising, not dropping. It goes without saying that this works in reverse as well. The less you sell, the lower your rank until you can say goodbye to your sales completely. That is A9 at work. Your product may still be viable, but it appears to be no longer relevant to customers. The reasons for this are numerous, such as new competitors, seasonal products, and more. You need to develop a robust strategy to boost your sales and order activity if they begin to decrease. And yes, even the best performing, most optimized Amazon listing will begin to reduce in performance as entropy sets in. So what works? Monitor and push for higher on-page conversions. Pages should be improved periodically. If your listing is maintaining a consistent number of sessions, but your unit session percentage is beginning to drop, consider taking steps to test and optimize your listing with better images, copy, or pricing that can raise conversions. Related, optimizing the images for your product listings is one of the most important factors when it comes to increasing your brand's sales on Amazon. We have an article about how to optimize your product images for Amazon. Consider customer buying trends that change with time and season. Your listing should keep up. Tip, if your session traffic is beginning to drop off, consider using Amazon's advertising services. If you aren't using ads on Amazon yet, you should really read our blog post about the value in PPC campaigns on Amazon and the fact that not only do ads bring in additional traffic and possible conversions, but the automatic and manual campaigns can serve as an invaluable resource of data for actual customer search terms that can be used in your on-page optimization. And and the second thing that works here is better pricing, discounts, and promotional activity. Customers are always on the lookout for a deal. And a recent survey of Amazon shoppers said 41% of respondents list financial incentives and discounts as a driver for making an online purchase. If your sales are slowing down, there's no better time to run a sale or reach out to your audience and offer a discount incentive that would convince prospective buyers to commit to a purchase. Cross-promote your products. Are your slower-moving items getting enough visibility? Consider bundling slower-moving products with the faster-selling items, ideally they should be related of course, by offering a money-off promotion. And the final tip there is if your products are seasonal, consider promoting your products in the weeks leading up to the actual shopping season. And finally, in this particular section around sales rank, what we know doesn't work. One is leaving listings static. Both Amazon and consumer trends are constantly changing. The listing that brought in traffic and converted hundreds of customers last quarter may not perform as well this quarter. When your conversions begin to drop, so will your rank. So consider SEO and sales conversion as an ongoing process, not a one-time event. And static prices. Price is a major factor in consumer purchase decisions, and Amazon is focused on bringing the best deal to the consumer. As such, your pricing strategy should support periods of discount or sales to ensure that your product is appealing to and converting customers. And finally, the third tip in our three tip article about optimizing product listings for Amazon's sales ranking algorithm is pay attention to the quantity and quality of your reviews. From the performance metrics that they track, Amazon cares if you care about your customers. Even then, they're equally concerned about the product reviews that customers leave on your page. In addition to pricing, your ranking in search results is also determined by the quality, quantity, and overall review rating left by your customers. And remember, it's all about verified reviews now. For example, take a look at the search results for electric guitar on Amazon. All three have the keyword electric guitar in the title in almost the same place and the keyword is peppered throughout the places that matter. This shows an interesting relationship between pricing as well as the quantity and rating of reviews for the top results returned for this query. The first result had a sales price of $89.95 and a 4.0 rating with 778 reviews. The second result has a fixed price at $209 over double the of result A and a 4.3 rating with 100 and, 
1,062 reviews, so more reviews and a higher rating, but it came in as, as uh, second. And then the third result had a more competitive price at $87.08 and a 4.2 star rating with 640 reviews. So we're not seeing a, a strict relationship between price, reviews, ratings. The algorithm is pulling in other factors that are determining who gets the top result in the top three. A similar trend can be seen in everything from televisions to electric toothbrushes. While price is a major factor amongst competing products, the overall rating and review and quant quantity of reviews between competing products do appear to be a differentiator and push pricier products above the much cheaper options. And one note as well is we don't know for sure whether this is Amazon's algorithm directly influencing this ranking or if it's a more subtle effect due from, from conversion rates on particular pages because of the reviews. So we know that the, the algorithm cares about conversions and conversions are affected by reviews. So maybe it's a two part relationship. So what works here? Follow up with your customers to increase your reviews. Operate within Amazon's guidelines and develop a sequence of post-purchase customer messages to encourage product reviews from your users. These reviews spawn trust to prospective buyers and can affect where you rank in the results. This is important for your product's long-term success. On a similar note, address your negative feedback. Work with your customers to write any defects or issues with sales. A review amended to three stars is still better than a one-star review. And use your product reviews to optimize your pages. Your customers' feedback can be an invaluable source of information that can be used to optimize your product pages. Analyze the reviews and identify common trends that you can reuse for your page. Do they often mention a feature of your product that's not in the original listing? Do they use your product for another purpose completely? Customer reviews are also indexed by Amazon and Google, meaning that the terms used in reviews can have some impact in your search traffic. Product reviews can be an incredible data source for mining customer search terms and potential keywords to use in your listing, as well as in the backend search terms and advertising campaigns. So in terms of reviews, what doesn't work? Well, one is incentivized reviews. Say goodbye to incentivized reviews as these product reviews that come from heavy discounts or free products are now a thing of the past. Amazon wants natural or organic reviews from customers that paid your full price or close to full price. Sellers need to deliver quality products and excellent service even more to keep review quality and quantity up. And the second no-no here is not addressing complaints. One and two star reviews may seem daunting to address, but the best approach is to be helpful and respond to the customer. Don't only let them know that you'll help, actually follow through. And so just to wrap up, takeaways for optimizing your Amazon product listings in 2017, consider that optimizing for Amazon is an ongoing test. It goes without saying that Amazon's not going to share its formulas for what's required for building perfect product rankings with the public anytime soon. Treat the A9 engine as a black box, that is, you have an idea of what it's supposed to do, and now use the full scope of the inputs available from the platform and begin changing the variables that you can. More importantly, track the results of your tests over time to see what worked best for your product and category. Remember though, the Amazon platform and its rules are always changing as the company refines and develops the system to maximize customer sales on the platform. Getting your products noticed amongst Amazon's 400 million other product listings is a huge challenge. If you need help with your Amazon channel, you can request a consultation with Bobsled Marketing on our website. Right, so Julie and I are back to give a hot take on this article, which is a year old. And just from your perspective, Julie, how much of this article is still relevant today? What what has changed, if anything, in your opinion? I'm kind of shocked that I'm able to say this in reference to Amazon, but all of it is still relevant. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's kind of, it is stunning. The one thing that has changed in the course of or since this article was published, that isn't even fully touched on in the article, but it is to an extent, is in terms of the back end search terms that customer or that sellers can include in the back end, the keywords. One of the changes in mid to late 2017 was that Amazon 
began only indexing the first 250 characters. And that's not 250 mm. words, it's 250 characters. So that's the one slight change since this article was published, is that you have to be even more particular and more careful about only including the most relevant high volume keywords in the back end of your listing because of the indexing has been now limited to only 250 characters. Right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And I think we're going to dive deeper into the topic of how much do the back end keywords really affect ranking and also PPC performance. It's a, a hot topic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I think it definitely deserves its own article and potentially podcast episode as well. So we will bookmark that for for the listeners to know that we're definitely going to be covering that in more detail in the near future. Yeah. And this relates to the back end search terms and how much of a role they play. It does tie back to point one in the article about really making sure you do leverage all the options that are available to you. Yeah. It's don't leave any field empty if you have information that is both accurate and relevant to include in it because it just, it makes your, the customer search terms then that relate to your listing, you increase the, the umbrella of relevance there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've, Use that feature before. If you're if you shop on Amazon, you probably have as well. At the left hand rail of search results, you can filter filter things out. So you can say, "I'm looking for a dress. I want it to be red, or and I want it to be short sleeves." Those are the fields that brands can enter into their product descriptions, which are then filtered out by users. So if you're not including accurate information about the product in those fields, then you're potentially missing out on people who are using that filter function. Yeah. And I think that that's often an overlooked aspect of a listing in the back end is are all of those fields because there are so many. I, I think a lot of energy is spent around, obviously, the title, the bullets, the description, what is going to show on the product page. But there is value to taking advantage of those other fields in the back end as well right? as related to filtering. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about reviews because I think that those are something that is often perceived to have a direct impact on the A9 algorithm. But what kind of impact does it really have to have either like a really good star rating or lots of reviews? Well, in terms of the star rating, it does play a role in the algorithm. The higher the star rating, it's it adds value and it, it helps with your rank in search. In terms of the content of the reviews, we're learning that Amazon actually indexes for or scans the reviews for keywords. And so the reviews play, the content of the reviews can also play a role in the discoverability of your products. Right. So they, they have the, to the extent that we know customer reviews, the, the language in those reviews is indexed to some degree. But What's more important about the number of reviews and the average star rating is the effect on conversion rate. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even the initial, you know, the click through rate to get customers to your product page. If you're listing, right. if you're listing in a competitive category and you have a product that has one or two stars and you're listing right next to a product that has hundreds of stars, the customer is more likely to click through when they see more reviews, it adds to the credibility of that product, the legitimacy of that product. So the star rating has impact on click-through as well as conversions. Right. Yeah. So one, one point that I would make in addition to the, to the technical information in, in this article is just think about what your behavior is as a consumer and what your own shopping behaviors are. Because Amazon, being a giant search engine just like Google – they are refining their algorithm and figuring out what user intent, what user intent is from specific keywords. Like what conclusions can they draw about what product a customer is ultimately going to purchase when they use this search term or they exhibit these kind of behaviors? Because for Amazon, they don't really care who gets the sale, which brand is ranked highest and gets the most sales for a specific type of widget. The goal of that algorithm is to serve up the most relevant results that the customer is going to actually purchase and be satisfied with that experience. So to, to that extent, just not trying to 
specifically game the system or game the algorithm, but thinking like a, like a consumer would is going to really sort of get ahead of that algorithm because it will, just like we've seen with Google, it will it will change over time and it will reward what human behaviors are. The algorithm will end up rewarding human behaviors that are actually happening on the platform. Absolutely, because the algorithm isn't just about relevance. You know, is the customer search term directly tied to your listing be- based on the keywords in the back end and your title bullets and all of that? That's in a, that's one piece of the relevance. The other piece of relevance for Amazon's A9 is that conversion. What yeah. they're going to show, not only what's relevant to that search term, but what you're most likely to buy. So that's how the A9 works. That relevance ha- is kind of a, a twofold piece there. Mm-hmm. All right. So any any final points from you, Julie, in recapping this this article and any other pointers you'd want to give our listeners? You know, ultimately, I think that Amazon, we've said a number of times, it's not a set and forget platform. And that definitely applies to your product listings. And I think establishing for yourself a, a system of product listing review is mm. a good way to go. You don't want to be reviewing and updating your listings every other week. <laughs> That's right. The- That's not strategic and it can really take a lot of your time. But establishing a schedule of maybe even a quarterly review of your listings to ensure that you're taking seasonality of your listings into account if it pertains to your product, to a quarterly review to assess the market, your competitors, and and where your pricing fits in with the competitive landscape. A a quarterly review of your listings to see how you can fine-tune what needs fine-tuning and adjust your offer, I think is a good way to go. Awesome. Awesome point. Yeah. It's, it's important to be involved and strategic, but it's kind of like checking your stocks every day and making rash decisions that could sort of play out by themselves. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. You want to pace your changes. Don't, don't be frenetic. (laughs) Yeah. Quarterly review. Every other month, if if quarterly feels too long, every other month could be a good way to go. But Mm. if you do make changes to your listing, allow time to pass to see what the impact of those changes has. Excellent point. Great. Well, this is a this is a great recap of a surprisingly like a an article with a lot a lot of longevity, which hasn't been the case with no. the other two articles that we recapped because so much changed with product reviews and how to protect your brand on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's amazing when there's an article that can really stand the test of time <laughs> related to Amazon because it is a constantly changing platform. Yeah, and so if you want to read the full article, you can find it on the Bobsled Marketing blog. It's called Three Ways to Optimize Your Product Listings for Amazon Search and R- Ranking Algorithm in 2017. And you can also find a link to that article and a recap of this episode at the e-commerce brain trust website which is ecommercebraintrust.com and i look forward to chatting with you again next week julie and hearing from our listeners sounds great thanks carrie